Hey friends, thanks so much for tuning into my channel. If you are a first time viewer, welcome. I'm Donetta. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Either way, if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so that you will not miss any of the new videos as they are released. And so today, I'm sitting outside of the gym. I'm getting ready to go in here and weight train a little bit. And um, I just wanted to get on and just share something with you guys that I have been um, just learning and growing with in my own life. And that is how avoiding the messiness of relationship, how it can really impact um, communication. So I just think in my house sometimes when we are getting to know um, new people and um you know when we want these relationships to work it could be any kind of relationship it could be um, on your job it could be at your church it could be in your organization it could be a group of people you know you're working with creating with um it could be the people in your zumba class whatever anytime we are learning new people there is often a certain level of what uh, one of my professors calls impression management. Um, if you go way back in my videos, maybe like three years ago, um, I did a video on, I think I covered four or five barriers to good communication. And I got the names and the descriptions of those from Dr. Larry Wagner, one of my professors, um, when I was at in seminary at CIU. Um, he also wrote a book called Help Me Help Others. I will link that book in the description. So, 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 so good. If you are working to help others in any capacity, it could be the people at your church, the people in your family. If you are a counselor, a coach, a helper, you will benefit from the resources in this book for yourself, your own life and relationships, and for other people that you may be supporting. But um, he covered different things that very commonly happen in relationships, new relationships and old relationships or budding relationships um, that are barriers to good communication. And we all know that good communication is key for healthy relationships. But one in particular I want to talk about today that we often see in new budding and growing relationships that's what can be called impression management. It means the way you're communicating, one of the motives of the way you're communicating is managing the impression that you make on people. And so I was thinking about how a person with my personality type, I'm often, um, I guess, more diplomatic, very careful what I say to people. And especially when I'm just getting to know you. Even if I already know you very well, I'm not like the most flippant at the mouth kind of person. We need those people in the world too, but that's just not me. I'm a little bit more thoughtful in my speech or um, yeah, I'm not going to just say whatever to somebody. I will tell you the truth, but I'm going to think about it first or I'm going to be careful how I say it to you. I'm going to be careful who I say it to you in front of. I ain't going to just say it whenever. That's just that's just me. Um, but something that I'm learning that in that, knowing that that is my personality type, one of the things that can hide up underneath there is impression management. And that was just kind of illuminated to me as I was thinking through um, just a recent scenario that I found myself in. Um, a situation where I was asking myself, after the fact, like, why didn't you say what was on your mind at that time? Like, what stopped you from saying what was on your mind at that time? It wasn't a threatening situation. I didn't feel like I was going to get in no fight. I wasn't going to get cursed out. I wasn't going to cuss nobody out. So it was really a situation where in a healthy relationship, clear communication could have taken place. And so I'm asking myself, why didn't I say such and such at the time? It may have actually been helpful. If I had said it then, as opposed to waiting to talk about it. And what I discovered is that 
a part of that was impression management. I did not want to come off a certain way to these people. I did not want these people to see me in a light that, to me, would be negative. And that um, that is connected to what I value when it comes to relationships and communication. I value when a person thinks before they speak. I value when a person recognizes the good over the bad. Um, and they are able to speak that they're able to communicate that so because that is something that i value the opposite in my opinion isn't that good um and someone who's very critical a person who um the first thing that comes out of their mouth is more so the negative than the positive so i didn't want to be seen that way because to me that is negative and i knew that if i said what was on my mind at the time it may have been taken that way what I ended up missing in that situation was really a chance to be real and a chance to be honest with this group of people that I want to know better, that I want to show more of myself, that I want to learn more about. But I was more concerned with the impression that that would make. And so I didn't say what I wanted to say. In retrospect, some may say, well, you probably did the right thing probably didn't need to say that thing because you don't know how the other person would have taken it and then someone else might say well you should have just said what was on your mind and then you wouldn't be here a week later talking about it <laughs> but at the end of the day maybe I did make the right decision to not speak in that moment but did I make the right decision for the right reason did I make the right decision because I was concerned about how I was going to look if I said what I needed to say, or did I make the right decision because it was the right decision? Me and the good Lord decided that a part of it was impression management. I don't want to come off a certain way because I don't want you to think that I'm this, or I don't want you to think that I'm that. And there are so many things that are impacted by that. Um, and I talked about this in a video that I did a couple of weeks ago, just talking about things that creative struggle with and one of those things is self-disclosure but um, dealing with issues with self-disclosure is very connected to managing the impression that you make on people and it's like you kind of can't I mean you can do what you can do this whole in our social media world when good PR can save your life um, there are some things that you can do to do your best to present honestly what you represent and what you're trying to say. But even with that, you cannot control how that's gonna be taken by anybody. You cannot control what those people are gonna think about you. You cannot control how those people are going to treat you or respond towards you due to what they think about you. None of those things are actually in your control. No matter how much you try, everybody not gonna be happy. And so, um, even though this, the situation that came to my mind, that the situation that made me think about this was really not that big of a deal. Um, it was just an everyday thing. But because I do care um, how the way I behave impacts other people, um, to a degree, it is important that I pay attention to how my behavior makes other people feel or how it impacts them but then on the other end of the spectrum as it relates to how they will see me that's the piece that is between them and God that's the piece that if they do see something negative in me that is actually there that's between them and God um if I see something negative in me that is actually there that's between me and God and that's something that I have to work on um, if I'm having heart issues of whatever nature if someone sees that guess what I gotta be okay with the fact that they see that and I gotta understand that them seeing my flaws should not impact how I perceive my worth yeah so it's like I know that and I just feel like I'm learning that to new levels and I feel like that is directly connected to being able to grow in an area of 
authenticity and, and know that like that may be appreciated by some and there may be others who don't appreciate it there may be others who feel whatever type of way about it and I have to be okay with that I think my point is for all of us and the reason why I'm even sharing with you is that um, it helps our relationships to grow when we're able to recognize and acknowledge little things like that that happen in our interactions because then we can improve then we can grow then our relationships can mature and, and blossom into something fruitful and I also feel like um, something that happens for me that usually pushes me to a point of growth is that um, something will happen or a conversation will happen or an incident will happen or it'll be something that just a thought that comes to my mind and I'm able to see like three other scenarios that have happened over a 20 year span of like oh my gosh <laughs> these three things are almost exactly alike these situations are very very similar what happened right there what is the real issue of underneath that Lord God so we can grow past this and I feel like that's something. That's something. The impression management thing is something. I don't want to hurt you. And then if I do hurt you, and I don't mean to hurt you, you're going to think a certain type of way about me, and that's not what I want. And while that's not bad, it's okay to not want to hurt people. But at the same time, you got to understand that, like, God is in control, boo. You're not. So somebody might be hurt, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Don't don't intend to hurt people. But if someone is hurt by you being honest with them about something, then that's, that's the messiness of relationships. And y'all can get through it. You can, you, you can do it. You're going to be all right. And that person is probably much stronger than you're giving them credit for. Um, so, yeah. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And this is getting a little bit long, but this came to my mind too. There are times where maybe you're interested in knowing someone more or someone wants to know you more, but both people are so afraid of making a bad impression that they just keep their distance. And that's kind of whack. I mean, it's all right for a little while, but after a certain amount of time, it's like, Look, I'm going to think what I'm going to think about you. You're going to think what you're going to think about me. But we might actually get to know each other enough to be like, man, I think you're kind of bomb. And even though I see some of your quirkiness, even though I see you're a little insecure in that area, even though I see like, mm, yeah, that was pride. I can be a part of showing you and letting you know that you are worth knowing. Even with your craziness, you're worth knowing and, and vice versa. So anyway, um, I'm going to end this video here. And I hope that the whole time I've been talking, my lip gloss has not been doing this funny thing. Because it does this funny thing um, after it starts to dry out. Um, but yeah, so don't let impression management stop you from growing in relationships with wonderful amazing people that God has placed in your life that's really all I want to say because that's what that's something that I'm learning in this season of my life and I feel like it makes sense for that to come to the surface now because I'm in a space where I'm getting to know new people people that are wonderful God-fearing folks but they're not perfect and neither am I and that's okay so now that that's out of the way we can get to know each other on a deeper level. What are, what are maybe some situations where you can say, like, impression management was a problem there. I didn't want them to think such and such, or I didn't want to do such and such, so I tried to avoid the messy piece. I can improve in that area. What comes to your mind? You can drop down in the comments and tell if you would like. You don't have to say no names, because we don't want to cause no arguments in the comments, but hey! That's the messiness of being on YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah, you can drop down in the comments and tell me, like, maybe some times where you feel like impression management may have 
impacted the quality of your communication with someone. You didn't want to say such and such because you didn't want them to see you a certain type of way. It might not be that big of a deal, but it is that important because relationships are important. And some relationships are supposed to mature. They're supposed to grow. They're not supposed to be stunted. They're not supposed to stop at one little space because we don't want the other person to think whatever about yeah. us. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know how you relate to this. Drop down in the comments and tell me, like, tell me about your struggles with impression management. And then maybe I'll come back and we'll talk through all of those barriers to good communication. I will link that video in the description. Um, and I think maybe I'll come back and do an updated version of it. But I'm going to go in here and do my sets, child, because we got to work on this. But I'll be back again soon. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you subscribed, hit the thumbs up button, and share this video with your friends. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.